It's a blowout. Eighth inning, 10-3. Bases are loaded for Verlander, who waits out of the real pitch. He swings, and it's a high fly ball. Deep center field. It is gone. Home run. And a huge bat flip to celebrate. All right, Ben, start the show already. What's up, everybody, and welcome into another episode of Flipping Bats. We have a great one for you today. I am joined by Spencer Torkelson of the Detroit Tigers. I am pumped to have him. Tork, baby, he is joining me in just a minute. The first overall pick in the Major League Baseball draft just a couple of years ago from Arizona State. I have followed his career throughout. He has raked at every single level. He was in the Futures game in Colorado last year, and now he's at the big league. He's doing it on the biggest stage. I am a big, big fan of his. I am pumped to have him on the show, and I am pumped for you guys to get to know more about him, to learn him, and to follow his career as well. So let's do it. Let's get to it. Let's bring him on now. Here he is, Spencer Torkelson. Thank you so much for joining me, dude. How are you? I'm doing great, man. How are you? I'm doing, I'm doing awesome. Dude, the, the season is underway. I'm so pumped for you, by the way. You, you got the call. And, and that's where I wanted to start with you. You know, I dreamed since I was a little kid of getting the call. And I got, at least, I got to the point where I was the call away, but it never mm -hmm. actually came. And just the other day at the end of spring training, you got that. And what I wanted to ask you was, how special was that moment? And, and was it everything you had ever dreamed of and more? Oh my gosh. It, it was, it was really special. And, uh, you know, like in the moment, it was just so surreal and, uh, didn't really process what was happening besides I was going to the big leagues. And then after the fact, when I realized, damn, like Mickey was in the office, um, he, uh, like he wanted to be in there to let me know I was on the team as well. So, um, to have his presence and, um aj's nice words al's nice words you know uh, it was it was a really cool moment and like something i can be able to tell my friends family kids one day um it's awesome that's so cool man and i've heard a lot about that situation and how it went down but walk me through that so you get called into aj's office and miggy was in there or take me through that situation and how miggy was involved yeah so uh George Lombard, our bench coach, came to my locker and was like, hey, let's go talk to AJ. And I, I've i gotten that that uh, that message before last spring training, and it was like <laughs> AJ telling me, hey, you're going back down to the minor so league side. So you're freaking out. So <laughs> there's a little panic, but um, I knew I did well in spring, and um, I knew I felt like I really belonged on the team. So I, I had uh, some good, good positive vibes going mm -hmm. into the meeting. And so I walk in there, um, Al is in there, AJ, George, and Miggy sitting down in the corner. And uh, they started asking me about a play from a previous game mm -hmm. that um, it, it, we already talked. I've talked about it like three times before with like the infield coordinator and all that stuff. And so I was like, yeah, this is kind of random. <laughs> and, and then uh, Miggy was like, Miggy's good in this situation. Like he kept his cool. Like he, uh, <laughs> he was playing along with it really well and finally aj's like well al what do you think do you think he's ready and i was like ah you know i i don't know T trying to play it off cool and then um aj said you know you're the you're the starting first baseman on opening day and so uh kind of just put my head down like what just happened um maybe gave me the first hug it was it was just such a cool moment that's awesome, man. That's so cool. Um, so to me, in, in my life, and my career, Miguel Cabrera has a big, a big fingerprint on that. I remember I was in that locker room in the big leagues, you know, as a kid with my brother being there and then obviously getting drafted and playing in the organization for five years. And there's always stories that I remember from Miguel Cabrera talking to me, whether it be about hitting. Um, I will forever remember. He told me one day when we were talking about approach. He said, yeah, you know, like, and this is when Miggy was at the height, when he was like MVP yeah. guy every year. And he would tell me, yeah, you know, there's times where I will set up pitchers. Like, I'll know they're going to throw me a slider and early in the bat, I just look awful mm -hmm. on it. 
setting them up for later. And then I'll know they're going to go back to that knowing I look dumb, but I'll set them up. Maybe it goes back to your point of maybe being a great actor. Mm -hmm. Who knew? Um, but yeah. that's something I've always taken with me and always remembered into my career. Has there been anything for you now that you've been around him for a couple of years, you know, over a year and now in the big leagues with him, some points that he's given you or just things that you'll forever remember? I think that that meeting uh, when I got the call to the big leagues is something I'll remember forever. Um, the home run I just hit a couple of days ago in Kansas City with him on second base and him greeting me at home plate, give me a big hug. And he was if as excited, if not more excited than I was <laughs> um, that I hit that and uh, shared that really special moment with him. And then I always ask him like with pitchers, you know, like, if uh because he, he'll see a picture before i do he's he's yeah. hitting ahead of me in the order but like hey like obviously he's not going to attack me the same way he's attacking miggy but i just ask miggy like what what's your approach against this guy what uh what he do to you what's his slider like and this is just to hear him talk hitting and he keeps it simple and that's that seems like that's what the great hitters do is um they don't miss their pitch and they keep it really simple you just really just like keep got to be short to the ball you got to see him outside, see him up, um, just small things that really helped me going into an at-bat um, really helps me. That's awesome. Yeah, he's so well-prepared, and does, he keeps it simple, but he just is so well-prepared, and that's why he's Miggy. That's why he's one of the best yeah. to ever do it. Who was your you, – you get that call, you're in that office. Who was your very first phone call you make when you leave that office? Uh, it's like – it was like 11 in the morning Eastern time. So my parents are, uh, they're in California. So it was eight o'clock there. And, uh, I want to say it was a Saturday. So they were sleeping in. <laughs> and so I called them and they don't pick up. <laughs> and so I'm like, damn, what the, what the heck? So I, I knew my girlfriend was up. So I, I called her. I was like, Hey, um, going to the big leagues. And I was, I was surreal. And then I, I was like, Hey, I got I really got to call my mom. Like, and so my mom called me back uh, during that phone call. So um, then I talked to my parents. But my parents were kind of my first call, but I guess my girlfriend was. <laughs> I didn't know who to call. Everyone was asleep on the West Coast. You're just trying to make the best phone call of your life, and nobody's answering <laughs> me. <laughs> I know. I, I really felt like kind of kind of bad about it. But so so now you've been up there for almost two weeks. Uh, what are what's something that you have learned or experienced that you hadn't and until you've now made it to the big leagues and had a couple of weeks? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, I think just, I've, I've never experienced, you know, being a major leaguer Yeah, and, uh, just everything that comes with that. Um, you know, in the minor leagues, you were all, you know, you know, it, uh, you're packing your bag, you're unloading your bag in your yeah. locker, you're, um, at a holiday in <laughs> like it's it's not super glamorous and then you get to the big leagues and um you could see, really see why people once they get a taste of the big leagues they, there's really just like nothing that will ever compare so uh kind of going through that and then just playing against some some really good players and finally being able to to get the chance to to meet them and greet them on first base and you've seen them so many times on sports center and MLB network, but to meet them face to face is really cool and let them know like, Hey, I love watching you hit or Hey, I love the way you play the game. Just little things like that. It's been really cool for me. Did you have like a welcome to the big leagues moment? I feel like everybody gets this, this moment that they'll remember like, Oh God, I'm in the big leagues now. <laughs> Um, gosh, I feel like every guy on the white Sox got to first base and was like, Hey, welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. And so, uh, pretty much everyone on the, on the Chicago White Sox greeted me and that was special. I, I have a buddy, Andrew Vaughn on that team, um, who I played against growing up in little league through high school, through college. So that was really special to have him on first base too. And, um, kind of chop it up for a couple minutes. That's cool. Now you get the, you get the New York Yankees this week. That could be, that, that's going to be a pretty cool one. Uh, yeah. so you, yeah. um, you, it took a couple of games to get that first hit, a couple of hitless games, and then that first one drops in in right field. What 
What's going through your mind there? Is it relief? Is it happiness? Is it, oh shit, I can get to second base here? What, what was going <laughs> through your head when that ball dropped and right? Dude, I was yelling at that baseball. Like, I was like, I hit that thing and I was like, get down, get down. And then uh, I kind of lost it for a second because he dove and then I saw a kick away. So I was, I was thinking two out of the box, but I, um, I had to pick up the baseball before I made my decision. But um, I guess, I guess it's a double, so I'll take it. But uh, it was, it was definitely kind of like a, a weight was lifted off my shoulder, yeah. um, kind of freed me up. And then it was, it was pretty crazy the the comfortability I had going into the next plate appearances in the baseball game. Like I was kind of like, damn, like, yeah, I feel like I got more bat speed cause I was just, I was kind of just stiff, you know, and then everything loosened up and, um, I said, uh, I said, now we go. So. So, there we go. So you, it's almost like the weight of the world is on your shoulders, right? So you have all that pressure. You you just want to get that hit, and then it all gets freed up, right? Like it, it's like the weight of the world is lifted off of your shoulders, almost. No doubt, the first one's always the hardest to get, whether it's little league, whether it's high school, or whether it's college travel ball. Like the first knock is tends to be the hardest one to get. And uh, once that's out of the way, it's just it just frees you up um, and lets you lets you play the game the way it's supposed to be played. I remember one there was one year in the minors. I started off like 0 for 12 to start the year. And even like it wasn't my first year in the minors. It's just that first one of the year, no matter what year, mm -hmm. you're like, just get the first one, get the first one. And I was like 0 for 12 in the first at bat of this game. We were playing uh, Port Charlotte against the Rays and I hit a line drive back up the middle. And I knew it was going to be a hit. I was so pumped. And I like tripped over home plate in the box. So I get my first hit of the year. And there's a picture of me like on all fours crawling, <laughs> crawling out of the oh, box. Oh, that's good stuff. Yeah, great. I'm yeah. always so jealous of the guys like first day B in the first inning of the first game. Like knock. I'm like, what? <laughs> is it that easy? Yeah. No, it's not. Did, did you, and this is a question I like to ask guys because for me, um, once you get to a certain level, once you're playing professional baseball, it becomes a lot about the mental game. And I, I kind of struggled with that. Like when I was good, I was great. When I was struggling, it was tough to get past that. I guess one, mm -hmm. have you ever gone through, obviously you've been through stretches where you've struggled, but have you ever gone through stretches where it was a real mental grind for you and you really had to figure it out? And I guess like, how, how do you get out of those moments? How do you get to the point where it's not about, okay, I'm going up to the plate, I'm over for my last 10, the scoreboard, my numbers are dropping. This isn't good. How do, how do you prevent that? Because I wasn't able to do it. Gosh. Uh, yeah, I went through a stretch last spring training. I was 0 for 15, and then I was 1 for 27 on the whole spring training, and then it filtered into the, the minor league season. I was like probably like 2 for 15 to start that season. And uh, it, was, it was definitely a struggle. You know, first time really – really struggling in, in the game of baseball. Like yeah. I think my, my worst offer was probably like offer six in college. Like I've never tasted any, anything like that. And I'm so glad it happened because yeah. without that experience, without those mental calluses built up in that spring training, I would have hit the panic button mm -hmm. fast to start this year. But I, but I was, I've been there before. I knew what I had to do. I, what I do is, you know, I just take a step back, mm -hmm realize I'm good enough to perform at this level and just trust, trust the ability, trust my approach and uh, stay positive because um, negative thoughts are, they, they creep in so easily. So you just got to stay positive as uh, as much as possible, trust your ability and have fun because it's baseball. You know, you can't take it too serious. Yeah. And, and I know people listening might think that's like cliche, but it is the hardest Baseball, you play it 162 times in 180 days almost. It is the most mentally grinding sport there is. And you have to be able to do that. You have to be able to step back, realize the situation, and stay positive. And it is not easy. And I struggled with it. So it's awesome, one, that you went through that and have been able to use that in your career. And now we'll always be able to look back on that and say, hey, okay, no step back. This is what I need to go through. And then uh, – no doubt. So the other day, you hit your first big league home run, which I was watching. Awesome. That was awesome to see. But 
So what happened after that? So you didn't get the ball. You hit it too far, so it didn't go in the bullpen. It went in the stands. Somebody gets the ball, and then I don't know the story. I just saw a picture of them in the dugout after the game. Yeah. So it was. It's lucky how it worked. So I hit the. I hit the first bomb. Luckily, there wasn't too many people in the stands. It was cold. It was rainy, and uh, the I hit into the bleachers, and the this fan got it. Didn't really realize what he had, and uh, the bullpen. Our, our, our bullpen catchers got to shout them out. Timmy and Jeremy. They uh. Tim Remus. They're like, hey, well, yep. Yeah. Still there, huh? I the love man. That guy. He's the they're man. All, they're the best. <laughs> But uh, so they, they, you know, kind of flagged down the kid and they're like, hey, we'll trade you baseball for baseball, you know. And the kid's like, oh, yeah, sure. Whatever. <laughs> Just tosses them down the baseball. They toss them up uh, their bullpen baseball. And then uh, Jordan, uh, who's in charge of, you know, authentication and uh -huh. um, stuff like that, uh, asked Timmy, you know, who, who'd you give the ball to? Who gave you the ball? And they pointed him out, found him, brought him into the dugout, gave him a signed bat. Um, he was with his dad, so gave him a signed That's bat, cool. batting gloves, um, some authenticated tickets from the opening day. And it was, it was just really special because, uh, you know, you hear those stories about people holding baseballs for ransom yeah. and stuff. It's just like, that's not the way it's supposed to be. And so they were, they were super cool about it. So I'm really glad um, we could repay them somehow. But they made a trade one for one. Did they know that it was your first or did they like, did they know it was your first home run ball they were giving back? I don't like, I think after the fact, like they, yeah. they were just going to the game just to enjoy the game. They don't know who anyone is. They just wanted to enjoy a baseball game. They somehow came up with this ball in the stand and uh, they're, they're awesome. You know, they, to give the ball back, like, Oh yeah, there yeah. you go. You know, it's, yeah. it's definitely it was, uh, the really cool. It's definitely meant to be that way. You should definitely give the ball back. But one for one for a bullpen ball seems like, hey, yeah, I'll give it back for sure. Let me just get like an autographed torque baseball. Like that that seems fair. But yeah, hey, they I signed that baseball and the and the and the a game used bat and uh Yeah, that's you know, great. we we hooked them up. So then your second one happens the other day in KC. And you talked about this briefly with the the greeting from Miggy at home plate, but that picture that moment has to be something you're going to get framed and have with you forever and be able to like show to your grandkids someday. Right. I mean, it, it was just perfect. Yeah. Yeah. That was a perfect moment. And as soon as I hit it, I knew it and uh, kind of look at the, looked at the dugout. Everyone was fired up. Uh, I looked, I looked at Eric, Eric Haas and uh, I'm his biggest fan. And he seems like he's my biggest fan sometimes, <laughs> you know, he, he was on the railing, like so That's fired awesome. up for me. And uh, just that whole moment um, was really cool. And to share that with Miggy, that that picture of me and him like going like this, it's so cool. and then uh, going back to the dugout, it was, it was really special to to be wearing forty two on that day too. So you are you're now two in, and I know you went to Arizona State where you actually broke a Barry Bonds home run record, which is not many people can say that you broke his single season home run record there. You're now in the big leagues. You're two in. So, Tork, can I can I pencil you in to break the other Barry Bonds home run record, or can I do that? <laughs> Was it 73? <laughs> that had so many homers, and then it's 762. Yeah, um, either it's one. A little, it's a little early. <laughs> um, a pencil, pencil would definitely pencil in, not a pen in. Um, pencil with an eraser. But, yeah, <laughs> you know he's he's a special hitter special player and um you know i was lucky enough to to grow up watching him play um as a giants fan so um those records are pretty insane but yeah you know i'm always i'm always shooting for some have you gotten to meet him at any point i know you went to the same school you grew up a giants fan was there ever a time where you got to meet him yeah you know i facetimed him in the off season of 2020 like 20 going into 21 uh had a good facetime uh, told me some cool stories and congratulations on the, uh, you know, on my success. And uh, yeah, no, Barry's, Barry's cool. He never came by um, while I was at Arizona state, but um, always heard that when he did, you know, he was, he was a good dude, really, uh, really cared about the program and um, really cared about sharing stories that would help 
the younger generation of, of players. That's awesome. So you, um, you and Riley Green, who seemed that he there was a good chance he made the team this year, but unfortunately got hurt at the end of spring training. It seems that you two are best of friends. You've gotten drafted. You've gone up the system together the whole way. Like, are you guys like truly best of friends? We truly are. Yeah. You know, I, I, uh, I admire Riley. He's such a good dude. And, uh, gosh, he's a, he's an absolute stud. Uh, he's really fun to watch on the baseball field. And it's really cool. You know, when we get home from, from, uh, from the field to, to have each other, to just kick it with, um, play some video games, um, go out to dinner, go out to, to breakfast. It's, 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 a it's a good relationship and I'm really, I'm really fortunate for Riley. I saw a video from you guys in spring training and there were a lot of video games being played, particularly it looked like a lot of PGA 2k. So who is better in that video game and, and the PGA video game, who's better between the two of you? Yeah, I, I love Riley, but he's off. Like he's, <laughs> <laughs> you can't figure out the swing, you know, like it's always like too fast, too slow. Yeah. It's tough. Uh, yeah, it is tough. But, um, so I, I got Riley in, in PGA, but he's got me in, in call of duty for sure. I'm a, I'm a big team morale guy in, in call of duty. He's, <laughs> he's more of the, <laughs> the heavy lifter. Yeah. So I am a big MLB, the show guy. I talk a lot about it. I went down to San Diego studios, did a feature with them a couple of weeks ago. Who between the two of you? It, can I challenge and and can either of you beat me in MLB the show? No chance. I've I've probably logged in a total of five innings of that game. <laughs> um, I've I've never gotten it for some reason. You know, I all my buddies play it. Um, we played home run derby a couple times in spring training. Mm. Uh, that was that was a good time. But I mean, I just never got into it. I I kind of want to now that um, that I'm in it. Yeah, and not only you now have like your normal like live series card, it's called, but they also gave you like a souped up like stud rookie card that's like actually really really good. So yeah, you absolutely need to get the game, oh, and I, I can it. I can help you. I, I'm better at MLB the Show than I was in real life. So there there's that going for me. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't we all at that? It's a video game. True. Good point. Um, so I also saw in this video, and I didn't know this story. You last year in spring training, something happened with you and a knife and you got hurt. Tell me that. What happened there? Oh, gosh. Um, we, were, we were cooking up, I think it was like some salsa. And was, we were cooking up some Mexican food and we didn't have a can opener. And I was trying to open up a, I want to say it was a can of corn. Like, no pun it. intended. Of course but, it was. Um, didn't have a, a can opener. So I was like, Oh, I, I could probably just stick a knife in this thing and go from there. And I tried to stab a hole in the, in the top with a knife for some odd reason. And then the <laughs> knife, uh, it was like a pocket knife. So the knife folded and then it just kind of sliced my finger. Um, had to get a couple stitches. It wasn't, a, it wasn't, that wasn't a great start to spring training. No. We'll, we'll blame all of spring training on that. Thing. Did you get a bunch, you had to get a bunch of crap for that, right? Oh, too much. Too much. <laughs> so one of those guys probably being AJ Hinch, who he actually AJ came on the show last year and got to talk to him for a while. And I, I just think the world of him, I think the world of him as a manager. And now obviously there is a difference between big league spring training and playing in the big leagues. And now you've gotten to experience him as a manager in the big leagues at the highest level. What can you say about AJ as a manager? How awesome is he? Oh, he's great. He's great. He knows how to win. Um, he just, he really just kind of gives off this energy that every day that we're going to win and we're better than them. And we're just, we're going to get the job done no matter what we have to do to do it. And the thing that really impresses me is just um, the analytics department really helps with this too, but just the matchups, you know, the, to hear him talk about, um, like who's coming up in the order, who, who in the pen he's going to use. Like that game we won two to one uh, in Kansas City. Mm -hmm. A lot of that is put on, on put on AJ, I think, because um, he was talking the next day about these matchups and how this guy 
did against this guy's fastball. And it was, I was like, what are you saying? Like, <laughs> this is incredible. Like, and, and you could see it, like looking back, I was like, yeah, that guy literally could not touch that guy's fastball. Yeah. Uh, and he's like, Oh, if, if it happened this way, I would have put Fulmer in first and then Joe or it was, it was cool. Wow. Well, you know, also, yes. AJ gets a lot of credit for that. But if you win a ball game two to one, and let's say somebody were to hit a two run home run, I would give them a lot of credit for, for that win as well. Hey, two run bombs help, but, <laughs> but you um, know, the bullpen really came in clutch there. So AJ, when he was on and talking to other players from the Tigers, it's clear that he has and is all in on creating a winning culture. He talks about that nonstop. How do you do that? And you said you can sense it already. How, how does he create that winning culture in Detroit? God, that's, it's complicated, but it, I can feel it. Like me, I, I hate losing, but I, and I love winning, but, and so I think that like the care factor, like caring about every single game, like it's, you know, a playoff game. Um, works you know like not taking that bat off not taking an inning off focusing on the little things um turning double plays he really preaches that double plays are huge helps Mm -hmm. and just uh and just good all-around energy i think uh not getting too high not getting too low and uh just going out there every day and, and giving it your best you know just really not taking um, anything for granted, not taking a playoff because you never know what play is going to win the ball game for you. So um, if you go into, you know, in that bat, a pitch, an inning like that, with that mentality, like this play that could happen could be the yeah. deciding factor in this game. And to just remain locked in um, is is crucial. Yeah. All right. So I have some fun questions for you before we finish up. Um, and let's start with, what is in your entire lifetime? And I like to ask people this question because you're obviously the best, the best in the world at this point. What is the best game that you have ever had in your life? It can be Little League. It could be high school. A game that you look back on and you're like, man, that was sick. God, hey, could it be a doubleheader? Yeah. I think, yeah, last year in Erie, I went seven for seven in a, in a doubleheader. It was... <laughs> Is I seven for seven with three bombs? I want to say <laughs> is that's a good day. Yeah, I, I felt like I was seeing absolute beach balls. Yeah, I swear that's a good month, and you had it in in a day. That's pretty. Cool. <laughs> um, do you have any superstitions? Like, are you? What are some superstitions that you have throughout the year, throughout a day, whatever it may be? Nothing crazy, uh, really. Um, in high school, it was bad. Like my freshman year of high school, I was doing well. And I would literally be turning off lights at a like specific time. Like if in a, in a specific order, like going to bed, like bathroom light, this light. And then if I didn't do it, I'd turn all the lights on and then turn them off the way there's, but it was, it was so bad, but, uh, God passed that fast because it wasn't sustainable. <laughs> it becomes a mental like warfare and in, in your head and you're like, Oh my God, I have to do this, 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 and this. When I had a good day in the minor leagues, I would like make sure I did the exact same thing every single day. It becomes mentally exhausting. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay. Who was your favorite baseball player growing up? Was that Barry Bonds? Bonds had Bonds has to be up there. Um, just because he's he was so great. And um as a as a true baseball fan to see like what he did. Um, he'd get three pitches to hit in a series and he'd be three for three on them. Yeah. You know, um, it was pretty incredible. I can, I consider him the greatest hitter of all time, perhaps the best baseball player of all time. But, um, that's, you know, that's my opinion. You're probably right along there with me. Uh, who this no year doubt. or at any point in your career, are you most excited about getting to face pitcher wise, not team wise, pitcher wise? Gosh, I don't, I don't know. I, I hate giving pitchers too much credit, just like pitchers hate giving hitters credit. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. Just I want to. I want to face everyone. I want to. I want to get everyone. All right, love that. And if you weren't a major league baseball player, 
You'd be anything in the world. What else would you have been? If Spencer Torkelson was not a Major League Baseball player, what would he be? Um, see, I, I've never in my life had a plan B. That's what happens I when your asked... worst hitting stretch is 0 for 6. You never have to think about a plan <laughs> I was thinking about a plan B every other week in the minor league. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Um, I've, I've gotten this question before, and I, I, think, I, I think I'd be into uh, – a fire uh, like a firefighter just because um one they do great things and but two you know it's that firehouse is kind of like a locker room vibe so all right i like that i like that a lot the locker room vibe is that that's when i look back on baseball of course i miss being in between the lines and playing but the locker room vibe is something that you'll you'll have forever all right last one for you and i have to ask everybody that comes on about this um you're now in the same league you'll get to play them at some point uh as Shohei Otani and how awesome is it to be able to see what he's doing for the game of baseball but also what I would ask is can we expect a Shohei Otani-esque performance from you at any point in terms of you getting on the mound and and striking out big league batters <laughs> gosh um Otani's a freak he's he's so special and it's um, I don't think he gets the credit he deserves. He gets a lot of credit, but I still don't think he gets the credit that I give he him deserves. I credit to... he deserves. Yeah, I know. I know you do. <laughs> but uh, what he does on the mound, what he does in the batter's box, uh, God, he's fast. Um, it's it's pretty Im- impressive, and um, I you will not see me uh, getting on the mound. I I, I doubt, highly Dang. doubt it. Um, I think Harry Castro is our, our designated <laughs> position player. That's awesome. Torque, I am so pumped for you. Uh, and congrats on being in the big leagues. Congrats on starting to tear it up now. Thank you so much for joining me. You're now forever a friend of Flippin' Bats, and you can come on, come back on whenever you want, man. I really appreciate it. I'm honored. Appreciate right. you. Thank you. Of course, man. Thanks. Keep killing it. A high fly ball, deep center field. It is gone. Home run. And a huge bat flip to celebrate. Thanks for watching. If you love flipping bats, swinging 3 0, or just talking ball, join us. Call us at 213 537 9339 with your questions. We have a weekly guest and we have a lot of fun, so hit that subscribe button.